I want to give you guys the five lessons I learned from my boy, Alex Hormozzi. Right, those of you guys know Alex, he's super successful, super popular uh, on the internet as, over the last few years. But I've known him for a while, a long time, years before he was famous. And here's how I met Alex. There's a software called ClickFunnels. And ClickFunnels is a, a software application that you can use to sell and, and market your own products. And once you sell over a million dollars, with one funnel that you built in ClickFunnels, they give you a plaque. And here's when I got my first one. They gave it to, this was on my fitness business. Again, a lot of people teaching people how to build online fitness business. They never actually made a million dollars with their online fitness business. I'm like the only one I know of who's done it. Anyway, so when I was getting the award, I said, you know what? I want to stand out. I want to stand out when I go accept this award, right? We're at the big ClickFunnels convention. So I made it so I was last in line. I figured I'd stand out. Plus, I was the only one wearing a tank top. Motherfuckers came in with suits. I had on a tank top and Jordans. Jordan 11. You know, you know. I, I make myself last. I come in, I hold the award, fucking give Russell Brunson a bear hug and the other guy. And I'm thinking, man, everyone remember me. I closed the show. So I thought. Then right after that, this was the first year Russell announced the next award. Past a million dollars. It was for $10 million. And I was like, what? I thought, no, no, no. I was supposed to be the main attraction. You know what I'm saying? I was supposed to close the show. You can't announce some brand new shit, but he did. And one of the guys who got that $10 million award was Alex Hermosi. Yeah, they announced a new award called the 10 Two Comic Award or some shit like that. And Alex Hermosi got it. I was like, what the? All right, okay. Now, I knew of Alex because my mentor, Kevin Hodo, Kevin Hodo, Kevin was one of the guys who helped me master Facebook ads. I got really good at it. He was one of the best Facebook ads buyers in the world. And he was actually running Alex's ad, right? He was running ads for Alex's business, Gym Launch. But he was also my mentor. And me and Hermosi were in a different mastermind group and where we just knew of each other. So I was like, fuck this motherfucker balling. And then the next year, I still don't make $10 million <laughs> in a year. So they, but they do give me another award for another business. I didn't even show up to get this in person. <laughs> I did not even show up to get this in person because I wanted the big boy, boss. I wanted the big award, I still didn't get it. However, Alex, we got in contact with each other. He wanted me to help him work on something. So at the time he had a supplement line and a meal prep company and he wanted to do what's called a joint venture launch where I would actually promote his supplements and his meal prep company to my to the army of online trainers I had and they would be affiliates for it. Before we worked on it, me and Alex, we had a conversation. I remember it was actually on Christmas Day. <laughs> the hard working dude. He's working on Christmas Day doing doing deal. And I was in Miami on a vacation and this motherfucker was working. I'm like, all right, cool. And I talked to him. He's like, hey, man, how much money did you make last year? And I was like, all right, well, I have a few different businesses. And between the two of them, I made about one point five million dollars. It, it maybe you could add them all up or more uh, like two, two million. Up until that point, I thought, hey, pretty good. That's that's not bad at all. You know, especially a kid from Southside Chicago from the fucking ghetto from the hood and I came and made $2 million a year, not bad at all. Alex told me he made 30 million and I felt like a bitch. <laughs> and Alex didn't call me a bitch, but that's what I heard. I heard, what I heard was, oh, 2 million, oh, that's cute, sweetheart. I made 30 million, step your game up, punk. That's not what he said, he said it in a nicer way, but that's what I heard, that's what I felt. That's how it felt to me. And I was like, holy shit, I gotta step my game up. I gotta step my game up. And then I started like obsessing over <laughs> Hermosi. <laughs> like I'm following him on Instagram and he's up at like 4.30 every day or sometimes 3 a.m. getting to work. And every time I slept past 4 a.m., like I wake up at 6, I'm like, fuck, Hermosi's been up for like two or three hours outworking me. <laughs> fuck, how am I gonna come up? But it was inspiring. It was, it was it was definitely inspiring and as luck will have it well as fate would have it i end up getting that award that i was that alex had that one time the the two comic club x war for doing 10 million dollars with the funnel 
Now I got it. But I had developed a friendship with Alex. You know, we were friendly. We never really hung out, but we we worked on that one project together, and you know, we talked from time to time on Instagram or via text. And there was a few lessons I learned from him that I want to share with you guys. Long story to get to this point, <laughs> but I feel like it should make sense. I don't know what you think. I'm just using his name for SEO clout. <laughs> All right. So the very first thing I learned from Alex was the power of focus. So Alex was making $30 million from his one business. Meanwhile, I had like five, six businesses and I'm only making two. Most people would have been happy with that, but what I learned from Alex is the power of focus. So let me explain. It's a big problem I see from a lot of entrepreneurs. So what happens is guys will have one idea for a business, then they'll start a whole nother one, then they'll start another one, then they start another one. Oh, I'm gonna start this business, I'm gonna start this business, I'm gonna start this business, <laughs> I'm gonna do this. And they start, they have all these different side hustles or different businesses, different ways they think it's gonna make them money. However, what if they would have just put all that energy into one thing? You would go further faster. And the, this, this is how you go nowhere fast. And that's what I was doing. I thought I was doing great, about two million a year, but it was, it was hard work. All right, I'm managing all these different employees. I'm managing all these projects and I was starting to get a little burnt out. So the main thing I did was just cut all those businesses down to one. I said, you know, I'm gonna do one main business. And I, I shut down a lot of stuff. I didn't try to sell them. I didn't try to liquidate them. I just, I just shut them down. Well, I did, I was able to kind of exit some for some money, but I didn't even care. I just wanted to shut them down. And I started, I uh, just focused on one thing, one main income source. And guess what? My income tripled that year by focusing on one thing, doing less. <laughs> I did less and made three times as much. That's like exponential. And guess I, I was almost shocked at how well it worked. And because when you're doing this fucking nonsense, it's your focus is deterred. Your brain is kind of like a computer. When a computer doesn't have a lot of RAM and you try to have a lot of programs running, you know, like when you have like 50, 60 Pornhub tabs on, right? And you're trying to figure out, you know, trying to find the best part to finish to, right? But you haven't found that right, the right spot yet, you know? So you keep searching, keep opening tab, and then your, your fucking browser just freezes. And don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about, bro. <laughs> don't, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Your brain's the same way, yeah. If you have too many tabs open, it's using up a bunch of RAM and it's gonna either slow down the CPU or things are gonna crash. Just like Chrome crashes when you on one of them masturbation marathons. Your brain's the same way, <laughs> right? It's gonna slow down or crash if you have too many like projects, too many things going on. So if you're trying to run all these businesses, all these hustles, man, just focus on one. But if you just have one tab open, that video will run nice and smooth. You can, you can run it at 2x speed if you nasty. So it's like your brain can run at 2x speed with only one tab open. You know what I'm saying? I think they understand this analogy. I think they're gonna understand this analogy. Now, a lot of you guys will do this under the guise that you're just really ambitious or you got all these ideas. That might be true, but what I think most of you guys are doing is you're hedging your bets, right? If you believe that one of those, one of those businesses would make you a millionaire, you would just do that. You wouldn't do all the fucking side hustles. You know you would, right? You're trying to see which one will work. You're trying to, you're trying to hedge your bets because you don't know which one's gonna work, right? So you don't, I don't wanna put all my eggs in one basket. No, no, no. What if you did put all your eggs in one basket and fucking protected that basket? Or you're just trying shit. And that's a recipe for failure, trying shit. Because that's what most people really fail because they're what I call try babies. These are try babies. So that's what these motherfuckers are doing sometimes. They're trying to see what will work, but you'll fail that way. Like it's too competitive out here to be out here dabbling and shit and think you're gonna get rich dabbling. No, you gotta commit. You gotta commit to something and go all out. And the thing is you'll never fail if you go all out. I've never seen somebody go all out of something and fail. And when I say all out, I mean doing all that can be done each day. All that can be done does not mean work hard. It means like all that can be done, which is way past working hard. And each day is not a lot or <laughs> or all the time. It's every day. Do that. That's something. Do all that can be done each day. You won't fail. I promise you won't fail. And if you do fail, guess what? You keep going. A try baby will try something and then quit immediately first sign of failure 
or maybe they'll fail like two three times and then oh, it's not for me it doesn't work the fucking winners the real g's will keep failing until they win i want to hear that you keep failing until you win of course you're gonna have setbacks but you keep doing it till you win right i talked to a guy i was in an uber the other day and this guy he was from cuba and he was one of those like talking ass uber drivers most of the times i'd be like oh, just shut the fuck up and drop me off bro i don't care about your life i don't want to know your story but this guy has some good energy he's super enthusiastic and he was telling me how he came here from cuba and how he loves america when he said he loved america my ears propped up i was like me too <laughs> me too <laughs> so that's when i started paying attention to him you know and and he said he came here on a boat on a raft from cuba but he got caught he failed three times he almost died each time and he, he didn't make it till his fourth time like most of you guys will try something once and just quit immediately <laughs> oh it's not for me right or you'll just look at something and say oh it's hard it's a lot of competition you won't even give it a real attempt this motherfucker risked his life three times in a row and didn't make it to the fourth time when he finally made it to the land of the home and the home of the brave and the land of the free finally i said man what if you didn't make that fourth time he said i did it again he said just for kicks just so i can fucking yell at you guys i asked him how many times did you have done it like wh wh how many times you have done it before you gave up if like it didn't work he said i'd have kept going till it worked and i was like god damn this uber driver is a gangster <laughs> this uber driver is a gangster man my man escaped communism Ugh. came to the home of the brave land of the free man he risked his life what if you attack your goals like that you know instead of all this shit trying to see what works man just pick one thing that you love the most or you want the most it could be anything it doesn't matter and just go all out and keep going until you get there don't try to you fail fail to you win don't try to you fail fail to you win right but you got to focus to do that this motherfucker will lose for sure <laughs> for sure this is this is the only chance you have and even if the other shit does work right it won't work as well it was working i was making you know a few mil but shit man my income tripled when i just did one thing in the first year and now it's way past that. so that's the first thing i learned from alex focus now you may be saying wait a minute but did, didn't alex start after gym launch didn't he start the supplement line and a software company and all this other stuff yeah and i've also heard him say that that was a mistake he felt like he shouldn't have did that yeah so there's that the next thing i learned from the homie hormozy was to move fast you know money loves speed you hear this all the time and but i saw it in practice with, with alex christmas day me and him are talking about a project we want to do together later that night <laughs> this fucking psycho <laughs> had already started on the presentation he's like yeah i'm getting the slides together he's asking me questions about something but i'm like motherfucker it's christmas and this motherfucker's still working i was like oh shit he's better than me i had to like come to grips with that that there was a human being better than me and he was moving fast like within hours of us coming up with the idea he's moving on it i was like oh yeah man maybe after new year's i'll get to it and I, when i when i saw that that's how he behaved no wonder he was making so much money to me because he's doing he's moving so much faster than me all that little shit adds up you get what i'm saying if you're moving fast if you're not wasting time if you're not bullshitting if you're hopping on opportunities as soon as they come up you can shrink the time in between when you have an idea and when it materializes by moving fast jumping on it and it was like little shit like me and him were having a conversation via text of, and it was just about sleep you know and i said man yo what's really helped me was the this thing called the chili pad he's like the chili pad i was like yeah i was telling him about it and then he was like yo i just bought it <laughs> like mid conversation <laughs> like he was about to he's gonna like that kind of speed imagine if you were doing that in everything if you were just really attacking everything as soon as you had the idea right imagine how much faster you get you would shrink the time between you have an idea and it materializing i hope this is making sense to you and it just seems like that's how he operates whether it was business or you know just some fucking random sleep advice he got from my crazy ass he went and bought the shit immediately which brings me to the third thing i learned from alex Ramos: the importance of sleep me and him had a long conversation about sleep via text <laughs> and 
he bought the chili pad thing immediately. The next day, we're talking, and he said, yo, bro, you got to get a weighted blanket. I slept 10 hours last night, and that was fucking with me for a lot of reasons, because I, one, I didn't know what a weighted blanket was. First time I heard the word. And I was like, I slept 10 hours. But he's up at like 3, 4 a.m. every day. I thought he wasn't sleeping, right? And then I talked to him more. He's like, no, 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 no. I go to sleep at 9 or 9.30. I'm like, he takes sleep super, super seriously. And it made a lot of sense. I was probably like super sleep deprived around that time. I was sleeping like four, sometimes five hours a night. I feel, if I got six, I feel like, hey, man, it's, it's a good day. <laughs> you know, because I was, I was working real hard trying to hustle. So basically, here's a study I found about sleep, man. When your sleep is restricted, you know, to four to five hours a night. But what happens is in, in that study, the, the researchers found out that people were more stressed. They were more angry. They were sadder, mentally exhausted and uh, more mentally stressed out. So if you're trying to fucking make millions of dollars a year, it, you're being angry, stressed out, sad and mentally exhausted. Probably not the most efficient state to be in when you're trying to make that money. I was like, oh, no wonder he's able to move so fast. No wonder he's able to accomplish so much in a short period of time. He's super well rested. And I talked to him about it. He said, man, I go to sleep at like 930 and I, I don't set an alarm. I just let my body get as much sleep as it needs. Then I wake up super refreshed and I just attack the day vigorously. And I was like, oh, shit, no wonder he can move so fast on stuff. And he has so much energy to get. He gets more done per day because he's moving fast and he's well rested when my ass is tired and I'm on enough stimulants to kill a baby or right? I'm taking enough caffeine to get you kicked off your motherfucking college <laughs> football team and he's just sleeping more right so I was like all right fuck it I'm gonna start doing that too so I started going to sleep way earlier and I was still able to wake up early I got the weighted blanket obviously you know I bought it like right there because I, I didn't want to compete with this motherfucker bought the fucking five hundred dollar chili bed just off a text message I sent to him. So I was like, fuck it, I got, I got, I got $20 worth of fucking weighted blanket. <laughs> and I bought that shit on um, Amazon, right? And then send him a picture of, of the confirmation just so he knows I'm not a bitch. And I started just sleeping more. And I just noticed, like, man, I'm, I'm fucking happier. Like it actually, I'm, I'm happier. Happier and just, it's easier for me to make decisions and get shit done. I get more done by sleeping more. It's like a paradox, right? Because you hear guys talking about, oh, no, I don't sleep. Sleep's for the week. Sleep, you know, it's like, nah, man, it's actually to the contrary. The better quality sleep you get, the better decisions you'll make, the healthier you'll be, and the, most importantly, the happier you, you'll be. You'll be happier. You'll be in a better mood and in a better state to make decisions. So I'm so serious about my sleep. I have this, uh, what's called an aura ring, where I, it tracks my activity through the day. This is also what I use to track my calories that I burn each day. So it's good for that, but it's also, it tracks not, not only how much I sleep, but the quality of sleep, right? The REM sleep, the deep sleep, the light sleep, different stages, and HRV, there's a very important, important metric. And I, I use the, the data here to, to do things to improve my sleep. I'm just making more money as a result, and I'm happier and more successful, right? So sleep. But this, that leads me to the fourth thing I learned from the homie Hormozy was sacrifice. This motherfucker is going to sleep at 9.30 every day. <laughs> 9.30, 10 at the latest every day so he can get enough sleep to wake up early and attack his goals. I want you to think about that. Imagine you had to go to sleep at 9.30 every day. How much would you have to give up for that? Like what kind of, what would that mean for you as far as social life, dating, fucking TV? What fucking, if you live on the East Coast, you're not watching none of the West Coast NBA playoff games. That shit start when you're supposed to be in bed. Like, think about that. And it's every day. I was talking to him about this, and he sent me a link to uh, an old podcast he did. Maybe I'll, I'll find it. If I can find it, I'll put that in, in the description. But he said, check this out. You know, I'll talk about this more. And he was just talking about, like, trade-offs. Basically, like, life is a game of trade-offs, right? He decided that he wasn't going to have any kids because he wanted to focus on making money. He decided that he wanted to 
right that that's not a trade-off that i would have made but it's a trade-off he made he's got more money than me right but you know i got a son and i, I everybody's gotta make their own decision i'm not making a judgment call on that right but there's little stuff like that and instead of being an international playboy like i was doing <laughs> right especially in my fucking i don't know whole life <laughs> instead of that he got like he found someone he's gonna marry when he was like real relatively young Right, so he can focus more on business instead of chasing hoes and shit, you know? It's, all of life is like that. Like, life is a game of trade-offs. I want to be in elite shape, super ripped, super shredded. You guys probably eat more cake than me. Cakes, cookies, and shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, a, it's a game of trade-offs, you know? Sacrifice is really, you know, trading what you want now for what you want most. It's a form of discipline, right? Being able to trade what you want now for what you want most and a lot of people can't do that a lot of people are so hung up on immediate gratification as opposed to long-term fulfillment because the things that are good for you the things that you enjoy in the short term are typically bad for you in the long term think about it fucking casual sex cookies candies and cakes <laughs> you know what i'm saying watching netflix you know shit that's like dop dopamine shit right so a lot of people end up chasing dopamine around the clock right but you know if you do that over a long period of time you end up like most people most people the average american 17 pounds overweight less than a thousand dollars in the bank account that's because they're chasing dopamine right immediate gratification but if you can delay gratification and chase the things that will give you long-term fulfillment right if your decisions are based off what will be good for you long term you're gonna make different decisions in the short term you might go to sleep earlier you, you might make better choices in, re in regards to your diet you might not be out here chasing hoes and thoughts you might be focused on building your business as opposed to going to the club or trying to be a international playboy like i did for so many years you know what i'm saying <laughs> it just depends on what, what your goals are right game with trade-offs which also leads me to the fifth thing i learned from alex Ramos was the importance of picking the right spouse now his wife leela she's mad cool i met her once you know uh, she's cool as fuck but she's also like smart she's the g right she got her own youtube you can see she's really, everything she says is facts right but she's like supportive like imagine you tell your girl man i gotta go to sleep at 9 30 every day <laughs> so i could wake up before seven days a week <laughs> you know what i'm saying as opposed to you know she might want to get drunk or stay up and do a, you know you know the shit fucking hoes want to do imagine you telling a girl that you're this focused on getting that bread right she might not you know say be down she might try to deter you from that it's probably happened to you you probably got a girl right now stopping you from accomplishing your goals or attempting to you might have a girl right now who's baller blocking but alex told a story in his book 100 million dollar offers where he was like dead broke in his like in lita's parents house and he was like broke broke like hundred thousand dollars in debt when he told her what was up and he was like yo if you want to leave right now i get it you know what i'm saying you might go find you, you should probably go find you a better option she was like nah I'm gonna stay with you no matter what, even if we gotta sleep under a bridge. I'm like, damn. Like, how many girls would go through that shit with you? Most of these, most of these fucking hoes. <laughs> they already they looking to replace you now. And you ain't even broke. They looking for a better deal right now. You gotta watch your back. <laughs> Imagine telling her you a hundred thousand dollars in debt and you in tears and she sticks by you. Man, I, I imagine that's advantageous. You know what I'm saying? I imagine that that's motivating. It's like, fuck, all right. As opposed to the strippers I used to date in the past would have been gone, <laughs> long gone, you know? And that's that kind of inspired me to, to look for like a, a chick who was like really down with me. That's how I ended up with Minovia. You know what I'm saying? Cause I knew she was, she was down for me. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I should go broke to test her. Maybe I should lose all my money it's too much money to lose how can that happen but anyway <laughs> those are the five things i learned from the homie alex Ramosi. uh i highly suggest you check out his book 100 million dollar offers it's, it's super good he was inspiring me before he was even famous on the internet i just felt like i should share that shit with y'all but listen most of you guys don't want to fucking read <laughs> right never read a book yet right so i have a course called baller mindset 
it's 100% free it show you it's link is in the description probably in the comments too and it really walks you through all the steps i took from being like straight up broke after my father killed himself i had to take care of the whole family figure things out during the worst financial recession since the great depression 2008 how i went from that to straight up balling hard as fuck on y'all all right <laughs> and if you want to do the same um go ahead and, and uh download that it's free link in the description